So, Justin, welcome back to Hogwash. Yesterday you chose your house pet and you chose an owl. Very good choice. How is that owl treating you? Pretty good. I have a lot of trouble finding it most days, but uh, he delivers mail pretty good, I guess. Yeah. And no postage. True, that's, that's good. Win-win yes. right there. <laughs> well now, of course you're a wizard, we have to choose your, your wand. But, like the sorting hat, the wand actually will choose you. Yeah, I'm, I'm questioning uh, how big of a wizard you actually are because, I mean, just like right off the top here, this looks like it's part of a vacuum. Uh, that looks like a dirty old hammer, and I think that's a cat toy. Hmm, in interesting, interesting. How, how long have you been a wizard for, by the way? I mean, not very long, Not yes. very long, yes. I've been a wizard for hundreds of years. I think I would know what a wand looks like. But if I have any questions on what a microphone looks like, I'll come right to you, <laughs> Justin. Okay, all right. So, now that we've gotten over the pleasantries, I see you're fitting in Slytherin. Now it's time for your wand to choose you. There's very different insides to a wand. It could have a dragon heartstring, making it a powerful wand, or a unicorn hair, making it a more consistent and faithful wand, or the rare phoenix feather, which will give you a wide range of spells. Any of those sounding good to you? The phoenix one sounds pretty cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, very few wizards have that one, so very powerful ones as well. One way to find out, Justin, let us let the wand choose you.